What's up, everybody? We are live. Major Wrestling Figure Podcast, Major Pod Network, live on Twitch. This is Smart Mark Sterling, producer of the show. And this show, this stream, is brought to you by our good friends, Peps Blue Ribbon. I'm going to crack open this stronger seltzer 8% mm, to get into some WWE goodness here. Some WWE Masters of the Universe figures. But I'm not alone, and we're back. I'm not alone. I've got my guests today. Boom, ravishing Robert, Joe Shoes. What, Joe? What? What? What do you want people to call you Thank in you this world? For the subscription. It's funny because everyone's just always called me Shoes, okay. and then when Broski would mention me on the podcast, he mentioned it was always Joe Shoes, like that was my government name, <laughs> and. <laughs> That's just become what it is. So now I've just changed all my social medias to Joe Shoes or the Joe Shoes. Got it. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, well, Ravishing Robert, obviously, if you if you guys didn't know, um, partly responsible for the figures that we're going to open today, writes the copy for Mattel. Big He-Man fan. I mean, J- Joe. And I come up with a few ideas here and there. Yep. It's like a very comprehensive, collaborative co collaborative method. Right. Method good shot. Where we've got a couple of them in here actually in okay. this set that we're about to review. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um a cut co- yeah, it's a, a, a good amount of group day. Happy opening day, by the way. I wore my even though your guys rained out my guys, which I think should be a forfeit, I'm still sporting my jersey. And in honor of opening day, I think that we should open some WWE Hell Yeah, week. that is a great <laughs> idea. So today like we are unboxing uh, wave six here, guys. We've got Kane, Ultimate Warrior, Goldberg, and the second female in the line, Stephanie McMahon. I can't really fit them all in the. There we go. Got them all in the shot. So, so yeah, going back to that really quick, Stephanie being the second, the first, which we unboxed last time, yep. was, uh, was Becky. Mm hmm. And last week, I had a v- way too late epiphany because I realized I messed up because oh. she's called the man of WWE Turnia. Okay. And I realized I missed a slam dunk because she really should have been the man, the most powerful woman in the universe. Ah, uh, I see. It's right there. Uh-huh. It's almost too obvious. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know. I was kicking myself after that one. But, you know. That's in the past. This is in the present. I'm sorry. All right. Somebody said my mic was too quiet. Is it better now? I turned myself up. Check. Hey, hey. Hey, guys. We're live on Twitch. Let me take a swig for the working man. Are you seltzer water? Um, <laughs> How this, is that seltzer water, by the way? It is phenomenal. Wild berry I am drinking. 8%. This one actually is the best one I've had. I've had lime and uh, whatever the other one was. I forget. Is it like a cocktail mixer? It's um, it's Paps and they're hard uh-huh. seltzer. It's it's like, uh, have you had a White Claw, Robert? I've had White Claw before. It's, okay, okay, gotcha. So this is Paps's Paps White Claws. It's the new Millennium Zima, is yeah. what it is. Basically, oh man, those are terrible. What shirt am I wearing? <laughs> I'm wearing for uh, Ninja Turtle fans Mondo Gecko's shirt. This came in the last TMNT loot crate. Yep. Um, okay. Is there anything we want to talk about? Okay. First of all, guys, feel free to ask questions in the chat. Um, obviously Robert works on the team. You can ask him questions. Um, I can't see the questions though. So you'll, so I'll, I'll like ask the questions. Um, pitch them to me and I'll just think that you came up with them off the top of your right. head. Right. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> Joe is a huge He-Man fan. So if you have any He-Man questions, these two are your guys to answer. Um, I've been questions. getting a lot of He-Man questions lately from the uh, Major Marks hitting me up on Twitter, which is fun. I like the engagement, so keep them coming. Awesome. Yeah, your shoes is uh, no joke, man. It's like, you know, in, in the WWE world, it's make Bill sweat, but once we get into Motu, shoes is making <laughs> Ravishing Robert sweat. Yes. I like it. <laughs> uh, here's a question. Are the WWE uh, Masters of the Universe mini comics ever getting reprinted in a full-sized graphic novel format? Uh, we don't have any plans for it right now, but I'd be lying if it's not something that we've said that we would love to do. Um, 
hopefully. Right. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I doubt that it would be like in a graphic novel format because they're one pagers. Yeah. But um, if we were to ever get around to do it, I mean, might get just like a, a loose comic or a leaflet or something like that. Maybe there's stuff where it's like you can get it back to back. What about like, you know how baseball cards, they do like uncut sheets? Oh, yeah. I think how cool would it be if you had like an uncut sheet of wave one and wave two and wave three. That would be cool. I think that that would be cool, actually. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's take this question. We actually talked about this last time, so I think that Choose has the answer right away. Uh, who do you want to see? This is from Crush Gals. Who do you want to see as too bad? Choose. You had the, the answer right away, right? Uh, well, to me, too bad would be the Legion of Doom, and I don't know. I don't know what the rights or the uh, intellectual property who's who's allowed to make who, but they were in my last uh want list uh so yeah. to speak my fantasy booking wave would be legion of doom as too bad and then Ro- robert you thought that too bad was like the famous thing was they both hated each other they both hated each other what if it was sean and marty <laughs> right <laughs> right okay that's like well, on the I nose know last time you had with a barbershop uh, accessory uh cesaro and sheamus and cesaro and sheamus which would have been a good one uh-huh. Or if you want to get a really deep cut just to pop Brian, you would do uh, Candido with Lance Storm. <laughs> For EC dubs. Yeah. Right. <sighs> All right. I'm gonna, let, let's open uh, Warrior first. Our second Warrior. By second the way. Warrior. The first um, one was super, super, super popular. Joe Shoes, have you opened yours yet? Because I know last time that was the first wave you opened. That was the first wave I've opened, and it's still the only wave I've opened because you had messaged me afterwards about possibly uh, coming on and, and filming something where we would open it together. So I have been saving them. I have so much stuff I need to open, whether Thank it's you. this and other uh, Motu related stuff. And Pritchard so 69. This will Thank be you for the second subscription. Wave I'm opening. So, so the so um, the first so the first one I said this a couple of times. Like I've used Warrior's words exact word for word because he's basically a He Man character, and that's what I've done right here on the art. Oh yeah, um, read read that to us. Load the spaceship with the rocket fuel. All the fuses and the exit signs have been burnt out. There is no place to run. The power of the ultimate warrior. Will always prevail. <laughs> for the and you can see the spaceship with the rocket fuel. That's first, phenomenal. First play at tokens. Thank you for the subscription, Robert. Great, um, great uh, thing. Great impression. Also, I'm right away. I'm loving this, um, like really cool cloak. It's it is looks like was, a. It stood out to me too. Looks like a cloth cloak. Obviously, it's not. It's plastic. And if you're new to this line, and we've talked about it a lot. Um, all the pieces are very easy to come off. So you pop that head right off, put the cloak on. We got some mini comic action right here. Ultimate warrior riding an armored triceratops. I don't think it gets any more metal than that. Okay. I'm showing that on the big screen right now. And we also got a little Jake Roberts is King Hiss in the background there riding. What was it? The uh, uh-huh. Tarantiosaurus? <laughs> is that what we call it? Uh-huh. Um, and this is another, we've got the comic of who's, oh, Stephanie with, uh, with HWO. H-W-O. Yeah. And, uh, and again, we're kind of like, it, this one's a really fun read because again, just kind of like stripping right into the ultimate warriors dialogue. Um, Mark, yes. the warrior guy, right? Yeah. You recognize the, which warrior this is? Or what era, I should say. Um, no, tell me. Is this one warrior nation? It's a WCW. That's correct. It's a WCW warrior. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> so the first one is kind of like from his classic. Um, uh, he, he, he probably is from his famous look from his Mania match against Hogan. Right. And then this one, to kind of switch things up a little bit, is the, uh, the, the one warrior nation. This cloak is awesome. <laughs> The, the cloak is I, now. I do have a question. So in Wave One, we had the warrior, uh, basically influenced by Merman, and now we're going for a He-Man look. It to me. No, no, no. I would say if I mean I think that 
So he's got, the, so this is the original one, and he's got like the Ular, the Savage He-Man spear. So that was kind of like the, the thought of like connecting him more to like a Savage He-Man. And this one, I think, is more of kind of like a King Grayskull. Uh, yeah, it, with the cape really gives it that King Grayskull feel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, continuing the lineage of, uh, of He-Man himself. This is... I love the teeth. Like he's got like the, the 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 teeth and the skull that's around his necklace. It's a small head. Mm, trying to put that right in the middle. Of the, yeah, there we go. It's like uh, they're they're like cartoony characters, but like this kind of stuff really speaks to me from the Hasbro area era. I just they look like toys. They look cool. They're colorful. They feel like toys. Right. I like the like. These things are just fun. I think that, and I mentioned this before, one of the most satisfying things is just seeing like how many people on the WWE side were like, you know, I'm not a He-Man fan. And then people who are on the Motu side are like, well, I'm not a wrestling fan. And slowly but surely, they've all kind of started to converge in. And I'm seeing more people who are regretting not getting in early because mm. they... Uh, that's an interest because I was one of those people, you know, because now I come at things and, and even though wrestling was a a very integral part of a long period of my life, I'm very much a a Masters of the Universe person now. And with the last unboxing, I've kind of come around to it a little more where I at first I was like, mm, I don't know if we need this. But like, where did that influence come from at first? Like, who's the one who says like, hey, you know what? We should mix up Masters of the Universe and, and WWE. Like, you guys had done mashup lines before, but like, it where been, did the... it, it, it had been uh, kicked, it had been kicked around here and there for a little bit. It was one of those things where it was like it came up again at the right place at the right time, and because it's such an organic fit. I mean, especially when you think about. Um, that classic golden age of, of wrestling in the eighties. Absolutely. Um, and the guys are basically the size of He-Man characters. They all, they were all around at the same era. I mean, I was watching Hulk Hogan's rock and wrestling the same time, but that was what, well, not the same time. He-Man was after school. Rock and wrestling was Saturday morning. So Saturday me- <laughs> mornings actually before uh superstars for me. Uh, um, so, but also like that, it, since you have the pieces and the bodies, right? Like um, the the WWE Motu is actually the one that kind of provided the tooling for Origins. I see. Because okay. the WWE came first. Um, also, I'll tell you this, Robert. The yeah. I opened my Warrior, and the and whatever you you call that around the boots was like in the wrong direction, and I couldn't no. I couldn't stand my Warrior, so I. You, if I just like moved the ankle and then moved the feet and now it's correct. So you had the, you had the, uh, the back of the back fur part. was in the front and I literally couldn't put my foot straight, but I was able to fix it <laughs> and it came out of the box like that, but now it's perfect. Yeah. Sometimes mistakes like that will, will, will happen. You're like it's not just with us, but like you'll see like someone packed out with like two left feet or, uh, or, or two arms Sometimes it's just a weird rotation, like what you got. Yeah. I remember um, when the NXT line was still at Target. I saw Ruby Riot, and she was in her pose, except her butt was facing forward. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was it was not the most flattering look for a figure. And it's funny; some people think those are like worth money, but they're not really. No, like, it's just mistakes. like all you have to do is take them out and spin them around. A couple questions. If Vince shows up in this line, would it be Skeletor? Triple H is already Skeletor. Right. Uh, he's for, a, he's a Skull King. For this Which is why I had a new Vince for my, my new fantasy booking wave for this month. And I said, if we're doing Triple H, a Skeletor, and Stephanie coming up as Eva Lynn, well, common sense would dictate Vince would show up as the faceless one. I w- yeah. I was thinking that. <laughs> so like, because before we had said Hordak, but Hordak wouldn't make sense, um, because the faceless one was the predecessor, Correct. right? He's like uh, of uh, 
Now, how did it work? Was it because there was Faceless One and Kel and Keldor? Well, and well the Kel- Faceless One is kind of uh, in the middle. We don't know. We don't really know a lot about the Faceless One, except he is the father of Eva Lynn, but he's also the keeper of the Ramstone. And he could go back and forth. He's not necessarily a heroic warrior, and he's not necessarily an evil warrior. He's just a protector of the Ramstone. Uh-huh. Kind of like Zodak, just uh, kind of like Zodak. Of- yeah, it's like David S. Pumpkins. They're their own thing. Um, and I will note, I I've taken off the clothes here, as you guys can see. This is a nice retro warrior, if that's what you wanted, except for the gauntlets. But as Robert has said, if you really want a retro warrior, you just have to do a little arm switching, which is very easy. Yeah, yeah. Um, might have to... Uh, You'd have to switch the... Yeah, you, you have to mess around with the armbands a little bit but to, they come to get them off. Armbands come do. off real they, easy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they slide. See, they slide just need to be careful. But yeah, it can totally happen. If you wanted an, if an you wanted. One Warrior Nation retro um, warrior. <laughs> All right. I go right next to your ultimate edition. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I mean, when you put these pieces on, it's very easy because, oh, sh- crap, which way does it go? Oh, Rob Zilla is telling us that the faceless one was actually on the Council of Elders as he was the king of Zalesia. <laughs> My man. <laughs> you, you know what? Like, I, I, I try to pride myself in, in that I know all this random stuff, but, I mean, it's a very... It's hard. It's it, it's hard and it's a very in depth universe. So I it's love not only that, but it's, stuff. it's completely convoluted because they've oh. written it and rewritten it so many times, and then classics try to tie it tie it together, which made it messier in some. In oh some my! Way. Like I and I love um, Toy Guru's uh, YouTube channel right now. If, mm-hmm. uh, for anyone Same. who doesn't know, Scott Scott Knightley, Toy Guru, who was uh, he was a brand manager for Classics at the time. He, or? He, he, he was he was the driving force behind like the behind like Maddie Collector and behind yeah. Classics and stuff like that. Like he, he he's was got a really... phenomenal YouTube channel, uh, Specter Creative. If you guys want to go check it out where he will do deep dives on individual characters and figures and, and lineages for these certain uh, masters of the, and not just masters of the universe stuff. He's got other stuff too. Obviously I'm just more interested in the master stuff, but like, if you really want to get in depth, like he tries giving you the whole picture of the character because like Robert was just saying, there's different histories. The mini comics were different from filmation, which was different from future comic books. It's just all over the place for so many of these characters. And and the, the the other thing that's good about that channel, like there are sometimes like uh, with Mark and Brian and Matt that you know when they'll talk about like the ins and outs of how the toy industry works, conversations with myself and other people from inside. So that channel is really good for people who want to hear someone who's been in the industry a long time, who's worked with all sorts of different companies, and really understands the the process that they talk about on the major pod so much about like um you know natural issues that happen or why certain decisions get have to have to be made why some things appear at retail um but collector is a completely different approach it's so, it, it's interesting it's he, interesting he, he has really so many good, good videos about the actual business of the toy business so if if that's the kind of stuff you're interested in there's so much content up there for you to check out a um, couple things storm woman 88 thank you for the subscription um rob zilla no, Marky e. Kayfabe says he's the faceless one just so he can reveal it was me all along, Austin. <laughs> um, all right, so let's do Kane next. I think there was something I uh, wanted to it, say, but. Oh. No, I don't, I don't remember. Um, okay. And remember, Robert, if you had any uh, part in any of the ideas, shout them out. I was just about to say that. So we were getting around to the uh, to this wave and you start thinking of superstars of things that would would fit um with a line like this you have to go for big names right you can't have a um as much as i love adam cole you can't have an adam cole wwe figure most people he doesn't have nearly as much um nearly as much awareness as what guys like kane do right so we are kicking around kane and um you know some of the things were like well you know what do we do? We already have Seth, who was burning down, and he had the flaming sword. And um, and the answer just kind of like popped to me. I was like, we should do Roboto. He's the big red machine. Um, 
so that like kind of that was one of those things where it just kind of like sparked um just kind of like one of those big aha moments um and the designers took it and they ran with it and um i think he came out really cool for roboto for those who are unaware i gotta tell you the hair is so cool it's it's like on That's fire cool. and glowing on the bottom. Uh huh. So cool. And what do you have? Eyes. The origins Roboto there. I do. I've got uh, I've got an unopened origins. I haven't popped oh, yet. Oh, unpunched. Look yep. at that. And oh, I've got my man. vintage. Got to have the uh, vintage. Rebuilding hell, fight. Ozer always makes me read stuff in my Vince voice. So. <laughs> Rebuilt in hellfire and brimstone. The man once known as Cain is now, is now cyborg. Is that, is now, I'm going to have to grammatically correct myself. The cyborg powerhouse known as the big red machine. Who's come to destroy all of WWE. Trivia. I imagine you in like some really nice um, conference room in a tie, standing up in front of people, <laughs> delivering that line. <laughs> no, I'm on the creative side. No ties for me. Not right. A- okay. Cool. <laughs> well, pal, give me, give it to me in the voice. <laughs> but we do have people who do have to wear. O- Ozer has got to wear, you know, the jack. He's got to put on the monkey suit from time to time. That's a that's the marketing gig. Right. And. I'm going to pitch that to him. Like from now on, <laughs> you pitch stuff, you got to do it in your Vince voice. Oh, hundred percent. Now the first thing I'm doing with this cane figure is I already switched it. I switched out the claw to the gun just because this feels like a very recent toy effect for me is the blast coming out of lasers and stuff. And mm-hmm. I absolutely love it. I love it on Marvel legends. I love it everywhere. I see it. So having that with this cane figure, like I put that on right away. Does it go on his right hand? Uh, it goes on yeah, which on, hand? On, on his, uh, robot on his hand. robotic hand. Yeah. So, so, so his right arm, the claw will pop off. And this is also our first uh, non melee weapon. Right. This is our first yeah. blaster in, oh, yeah. the, in the WWE line. Now you put Roboto back without knocking everything and, over. And like Mark was saying, the head on this is really cool because you've got that, like the uh, bottom tips of his hair look like they're glowing on fire. And even in the eyes, he's got that like burning orange to him, that tint. And it really, uh, wow, this is a, I like this a lot. For the record, this one, impossible to do a retro. This one's just got robotics yeah, all over it, it and all that stuff. You can't yeah. do anything, but super cool. Yeah, it like goes well with The Undertaker, right? Undertaker, you can't do a retro either. But side by side. So this one is a story of Stephanie. She's kind of like our main villain in here, facing off against the Undertaker, and she's she kind of does the big cane reveal. So kind of recreating that hell in the cell moment of when Kane came back and faced his brother for the first time. Hmm. That's gotta be Kane. That's gotta be Kane. Marky Kayfabe says, I was spoiled by Wave 3, walked into Walmart and grabbed it the whole set. I did too, although I was in the a very random middle of nowhere Walmart in like the top of Maine. I have yet to see anything past uh, Wave 1 in stores. Really? Yeah. Wow. Everything I've had to uh, pre-order everything online. I've actually never seen... Totally honest. Never seen any of the He-Man except for the one set that I found that I documented on a Silver Linings vlog. It was. It's all on there. I was so thrilled. I've seen them. I've seen them here and there. Um, I've seen people walk out of stores with them. Um, this is awesome. This is my first time having this set yeah, in hand. The- <laughs> and it's so good. And yeah. I know Mark was saying like you can't make uh, like the Remco style out of the cane really and. Those, for me, I know this is me personally, and I know I'm probably in the minority since this is a WWE line, but for me, those have been my favorite figures thus far, is this cane I'm really liking. And, I, like, my other favorites have been the um, Manny Faces as the New Day and the Undertaker as Scare Glow. So the cane, I'm really, like, I'm really enjoying having this. 
So I had to get so Undertaker. As, I wanted to put Undertaker next to Kane. So as someone who is um, um it was a Mo2 purist, so now that you have these, right? Could you see yourself? I don't. Do you do like figure photography or anything like that? I really, I don't, I don't think I'm creative enough, creative enough for that, especially because it's very intimidating to go on Instagram and see these people with these phenomenal accounts and see what they're doing with water effects and, and flame effects. And I'm like, uh, I was just going to kind of put this in my kitchen sink and maybe, uh, there are lots of people who do that too. You know, like my idea of figure photography is just saying, hey, look, I got this figure and then like standing it in front of my eternity back here. All right. So so in so in your mind, if you were going to do like Castle Grayskull with He-Man Skeletor uh, trap jaw inside of no, the leg. Couldn't do it. Car, couldn't do it. Would you have these guys in the background? Because, you know, like in the art. So here, uh, mm. like. Land shark, right? You've got mm-hmm. like the art of all these background characters that have never had figures made out of them, just to kind of build out the world. Yeah, um, I don't know if I could do that because I feel like they don't exist in that world. They exist in WWE Eternia, and that, so I would need a different area to build out WWE Eternia. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Like I'm not a big uh, customizer or anything either. So like even. Like when people say, oh, I'll just switch out the arms to make this. Oh, God, no. Like, you, you can't do that. Oh, I do that all just, the time. Um, um, get, did wait, you guys did you guys see head, the... Uh, seriously. Yeah, the head's great. I have it right it on the big screen. Did you so, did you watch the Marvel... Um, there's a Marvel docuseries on Disney Plus and one of the, the episodes... The photography episode. Yeah. Wasn't that great? It's spectacular. Uh-huh. That guy, like, using the aerosol can to make the water spray yeah. on, like, Squirrel Girl or whatever it was. So cool. And he's down on the ground in the dirt. Like, yeah. he's got his camera on it. That's why I said it's... When you see stuff like that, for someone like me who is beyond a novice, it's intimidating to say, like, oh, I want to try this because I would be ridiculed by the internet and I don't have... You know, I have too much of an ego to allow that to happen. <laughs> All right, let's do Stephanie. I, <laughs> um... I uh, I really liked it because it gave me like a peak. But I always wondered how did they do some of these effects, and then I was like, of course, so it was like an air can, and then they capture it at the right moment, and it seems so um, so simple. I'd like to give it a shot. Um, I'm not the best figure photographer, um, but you're artsy with enough the, with the lighting. Yeah, but yeah, I can pose the guys out and and make some fun things. Um, but to me, it's kind of like it's kind of like cooking, right? So it's like you know, I like to. I've been watching a ton of videos on how to make steaks. Really, <laughs> trying to perfect those steak techniques. Now, and, when um, you get your steaks, do you go to Walmart for steaks? Because no that's what way. we do in this group. My God, no way. I have never bought a well, steak well, at Walmart. We, we we also eat we also eat boxes of peeps in this group, but but I ain't gonna do that anytime soon. Yeah, how you feeling? Are you feeling okay, man? Yo, it wasn't the peeps that hurt me. It was the fact that I was, it, it was very spontaneous. It happened out of nowhere. Mark, we were, uh, Dylan had a live stream going on and he had mailed me five boxes of peeps and they had come earlier that day. And someone, I believe it was Mark Bitters was in Dylan's chat and said, Hey, shoes should go live and eat these like right now. And I was like, uh, I'm Didn't not, you just have dinner or something like that? I had just had Chinese buffet. So oh, no, bro. So the end of my stream uh, with Dylan, when the peeps got, uh, it, it, it almost became a, uh, it was an emergency situation. We had to bail very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> this one, this, so this is a classic, classic cover. This is like the um, classic Evil Inn mm-hmm. pose with uh, summoning... Triple H. This is like a really cool story in this in the Jake the Snake comic. A little bit of continuity. Ooh. Triple H turned to stone, and Stephanie finds him and talks about their journey on trying to find the uh, the Skull King mask. And what does she do? Why well, naturally she completely blows him up and claims the crown for herself because it's uh it's the era of the queen of the queen now. 
first impressions, I love this Stephanie. Uh, you go back to like 2002 era Stephanie, like right. roll tide on that. <laughs> and uh, and I I really like the, uh, I guess it was the, the WrestleMania mask that uh, her and Triple H uh-huh. came out with. Uh, I want to say that was the one in San Francisco against Sting. If I'm remembering correctly, I could have that wrong. I think that was the, it, it, I, I, I'm pretty, I think it was that one. Um, although this actually fits on her face yeah, on the elite, on? it doesn't. Oh. So, oh, okay. So it, I'm gonna try to get this on the screen. So okay. in between, the, there's like little divots. Yep. On the side of her head there, and then this mask, which is super cool, has like these little pieces. And right. Then, so the so the so the um the one that came with the elite has the 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 uh handle that I would just hold in her hand and you really couldn't put it on her face unless I just never figured it out but this one is specifically made so you can create your skull queen right there. Joe Raff says and a couple people have asked this are we ever gonna see Piper's slime pit? Um It'd be cool to do like a Piper's pit uh it, w- it, it would be. Um, I mean, we had talked about before and then it like had popped its way into the mini comics. Um, who knows what, what, not right now, but who knows what the future brings. I think it'll be cool. Uh, we would have to call it something else though, because Nickelodeon owns the trademark for slime. Do they? What? <laughs> Nickelodeon, so you that's jerks. That's why. Fun. Fun trivia fact. Remember PowerCon? They had the Horde Zombie He-Man. We couldn't call we couldn't that call slime, it slime Pit, pit He-Man. Yeah. He-Man oh, wow. because, because the trademark for slime is officially owned by someone else. So. I am learning so much today. This is awesome. You know, and I'll put... Uh, this is my original vintage evil Lynn we'll put with Steph and you see the influence even going around to the the deco on the uh on the clothing and stuff. I, I I'm really impressed with this. Even when you match it up with the Origins Evil Lynn. Oh yeah. yeah. There you go. And I have on so the big I, screen um Triple H right next to her. So, oh yeah, well you do uh, too. There you go. Well, well, which triple? So I did a little bit of a swap ski. Okay. I put the Skull King on the uh, the the Gray Skull Mania Triple H because that's what it actually goes to. Got it. The other one, the which is more of like the DX era. Yeah, that that's Terror Claws Triple H. That, this one is actually the Terror Claws. That's, Claws the, that's H. the Terror Claws. Okay. Yeah, I just like swapped the thing to make it more accurate to what. Uh, what it probably oh yeah the, okay yeah so i have the triple the dx one and it's yeah it doesn't match as good but holy crap good idea all right i mean it it it, it kind of like you know makes the other triple h like not as impressive for me mm-hmm. but i think i think that when you stack them all next to each other this is the superior figure right it's kind, of, it's kind of similar to um, Warrior out of the way. I gave the Faker John Cena, the Gray Skull Mania John Cena's, oh, yeah. Cena, John Cena's accessories. <laughs> so that way, <laughs> I uh, feel cool. like my Maryland accent is coming back and getting the better of me. Right uh, now. <laughs> if CPA was in here, he would have laughed really hard. Rob Zilla says, question for Robert, was Stephanie's wand supposed to collapse down? The art on the back made it look like it does. No, it's just one piece. I think it's the same. No, it's not the same tool. It is not the same tool as Evil Lynn. I think we talked no. about that last time. The Evil Lynn is the staff. This one has... Um, uh, like a bone staff on Stephanie. Yeah. So it does not actually come apart to make her... Um, like she Like she usually has like a, a shorter wand. Hmm. Um, so no, it doesn't collapse. Still looks awesome. You'd be a fool for not getting this. And Robert, I got to ask you. If you can find it. Th- if this, you can find it. Yeah, are there plans t- right now to continue the line? Is is there a seven in, in, the t- in talks or? I can't say anything to that right now. Got it. We haven't uh, announced 
plans to not do anymore. I'll okay. say that, uh, you know, sure. I, I, uh, um, here's, here's what I'll say. It's WrestleMania week, yes. which means access is coming up, which means reveals. Like, what do we have every single access, right? Right. What do we have left less access? So are you guys uh, doing so a, another video thing this time? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll have something. Cool. Um, I'm not afraid. I, I'm not, I'm afraid of like how much I can see and how much. Got I it. Okay. All right. We're moving on. <laughs> Let's go to Goldberg. But keep your eyes peeled. Keep your ears peeled. And I would recommend to everyone. You're not going to want to miss what's coming. Ooh, baby. I promise you that. Ooh. I promise you that. All right. Goldberg here. Perfect gear for Goldberg. <laughs> The heroic human jackhammer, which I <laughs> I was really wondering if they would let me get it through because Vince called himself the genetic genetic jackhammer. jackhammer. Uh-huh. <laughs> but but fortunately they just I was like I'll put it down too. They just kind of let it slide. You know, jackhammer is Goldberg's finishing move, so it works out perfectly. Um, this was one where I the, you know to me. So he's Ram Man, right? Mm-hmm. He's got the Ram Man aesthetic. I think that just by name alone, Bam Bam Bigelow would have been an awesome Ram Man Bigelow. Unfortunately, Ram Bam Bigelow, kind of, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I was talking about before about these guys needing to be top tier. Although I love Bam Bam, and who doesn't? But in the eyes of you know most Casuals. people yeah. or or well, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even say most people in the eyes of kind of like the corporate world. Yeah. Bam Bam isn't in the upper echelon of, uh, of, of the Goldbergs. Although they, although Bam Bam did main event at WrestleMania. <laughs> True. But <laughs> years excellent. ago, you know, but I guess it's no different really than um, what Darren Ravel was talking about in his interview with the guys, you know, when, when not everyone is a hardcore fan, like, like we are. And, and especially, and this is a very niche line to begin with. People want stars. They want yeah. the names. They want those people that stand out and that they remember. So I get it. You know, yeah, obviously Bam Bam would have been great, but I completely get the need, especially for someone who still shows up on TV from time to time. Yeah. I think he's still got, uh, he hasn't officially announced that he's done yet. Hmm. Spearing the, uh, spearing the warrior. Very true. And, for this is a great callback. This is a very uh, a very niche masters thing. Is uh, Ram Man kind of attacking the good guy on here because he had a very aggressive personality in the original mini comics, and That's he was right. actually he was introduced by actually uh, fighting with He Man. That's right. So, That's right. Because he's a great big dummy. Yes. So <laughs> so this comic Ram Man, is- not Goldberg. This one I is. You make your own conclusion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he he comes around. Uh, he gets tricked. So we've got this snake guards here who are leading out Goldberg. And if you notice in this, we even did those nice little nods where Goldberg hits his head on the top of the door as he's coming out to do yeah. battle. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> that is that a great think- detail. I got that, 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 that one was a corporate Steve request because I was like, I'm going to just do his entrance because what's more classical than that? He's like, you got to have his head hit the top of it. That's it's really I, I got to say the amount of detail and the amount that you like the all the inside references that you guys have gotten into a one page mini comic in all of these is I mean, it, it's ambitious and you guys pull it off really well. And I, I don't want to just come off like I'm, you know, kissing up to Mattel here and you guys. But like, I mean, as someone who wasn't keen on this line to begin with, like I really appreciate these mini comics. I think they're spectacular. No, thank you very much. I um, I'm right there with you. Um, not just because I'm the guy who writes them, but <laughs> if I compare them against origins, um, you know, these, because we're kind of dealing with these, like, although they're short stories, they're single character stories and you get everything you need. That's a little bit of a taste with it. Origins were trying to squeeze so much in, that's that's a tight space. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's not a whole lot of space that you have to tell the stories of like four to six characters. Um, and this is definitely one also, like I said, Steve, Steve was the one who was like, make him hit his head. 
and the way that I was able to throw out the ideas for the um, make Kane the uh, the big red machine. Mm-hmm. I love getting ideas for um, you know or, or, or putting stuff in that other people want, just because it makes it so much damn better. <laughs> yeah, and now. Like when it comes to the mini comics, um, especially because you guys have origins going on at the same time uh, with origins, the same mini comic is packed with every figure in the in the wave in the wave. Correct. So, yeah. So was this like on um, like were you thinking about doing something similar at first and this just kind of came out of that to focus on the one character or was that well, we, only, we, we, we only had one page to work with. We knew that. OK, there was, there was a whole discussion about uh, behind, like, how much space in the mini comic we wanted. There was even discussion of does it include the mini comic? Fortunately, Saner heads prevailed. And it's like, yes, this must include a mini comic. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think that it was uh, the designer's idea to do the Secret Wars splash page and then use this as kind of. Um, I mean, it's it, it's almost like it it. it uh, I think that the reason why it reads so well is because it reads like a Sunday comic. Mm, yeah. Right? Like an like, easy strip. Like, uh-huh. Like they've got like a, a four panel comic always has like a certain pacing. Um, so it, it, it lends itself really well to it. Um, whereas uh, like trying to do half of the size of half of a, like really a quarter of a size of what a regular comic book should be. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's in some ways even a larger challenge. Uh, speaking of the comic books, uh, Dot asks, uh, who owns the art for the mini comics? Does it go back to the artist? Does the company own it outright, et cetera? N- no, I mean, it's it's owned by Mattel, yeah. right? It, yeah. um, everything that Mattel, you know, if, if you do something on, either under contract or as an employee of Mattel, then they own, they own the rights right. to it. Right, yeah. All right, so let me talk about this Goldberg for a second. Um, I've taken the shoulder pad off and the hat and the weapon, and you have yourself um, definitely the Almost. first WWF run. Well, hold on, Robert. I'll tell you yes. right now. First WWF run Goldberg, I can tell because he doesn't have gray in the goatee, um, and he's not wearing trunks, so boom. But So look, he's got the wrist guards, right? But the wrist guards come off. Oh. <laughs> You you can Why take. Why didn't we do this before? <laughs> you can take the the hands off. Bingo bango. Um, and you got yourself a retro oh, wow. Goldberg to wrestle your smart Mark Sterling. I mean, I don't know if Goldberg wore black <laughs> armbands. D Freedom's like, no, he did it. Of course, he did it. I don't think he wore <laughs> full gloved black hands or whatever, but whatever. This is close enough. And you could probably switch the hands. You could switch the hands with like a regular um, yeah. hand. Or maybe Goldberg should just start wearing gloves. Sure. The freedom. Hopefully we see the mo to Mick Foley and Daniel Bryan that were tentatively listed at one point, I guess, apparently. Or we're tentatively listed, listed in-, <laughs> in, a, in a leaked <laughs> list probably. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, that was when we were telling people, don't trust what you see. <laughs> <laughs> people love those early list release. Yeah. You know, people may not remember the the vintage Ram Man for all you guys who are WWF Hasbro collectors. The vintage Ram Man is the original jumper. He would squat down and had the button on the back for him to pop right out. So I was gonna so, say Ram Man was one of my favorite toys. Um, when I was little, so I love this. Have you have you guys seen the um, the origins Ram Man? Have you had your hands on it? Uh, uh-uh, not at all. Oh, you mean this one? Uh, oh, oh, baby, uh, let's see that. Hold on, I'm gonna switch screens here. Let's see that. We got the deluxe Ram Man. Yeah, the bigger card. Deluxe. I have it with his. Um, comes with a second head that's an armored face, which I personally. I think that it makes them look. Really, really oh really yeah, cool. I dig it. Now the one, the, the one cool thing. So he has articulated legs, right? Oh, so he you can do something, but straighten them out, and guess what? Phenomenal. 
There you go. He still does the he still does the jumping action. Yeah, shoes. I think you got to open these. You got to open them all up. I, you know, I'm I'm at that space now where you have a counter that you can't that you haven't well, been made a sandwich on you know, in a long time. I've been a mint on card collector for so long that I've almost forgotten how much you appreciate having a loose figure in your hand and you know there there is a difference to it you know and just the last time we did this with wave five it was you know it was like the nostalgia hit of of having a new figure and being able to pose it or being able to set something up in your head and with masters of the universe especially and and with this line as well the artwork on the packaging is so effective at building these possible battle scenes in your mind that it gives you like ready-made material to go into and, and hop on your bedroom floor and have your figures and have your good guys, your bad guys and whatever you're going to do. Like it's all there for you. And, and I got all those vibes like flooding back to me when we did the last time. And, and here again, like I'm not necessarily the biggest Goldberg fan, but I'm sitting here going, Oh man, the things I could do, like get Goldberg and Roboto teaming up together. Like, this is, <laughs> right. Yeah. Just holding them makes a, you think that stuff. Yeah, for sure. This is a great figure, too. Like, yeah. Just posing him out, getting ready to do his, like, his spear. Well, my secret, my secret goal is that I want to do a, um, Broski's always like so big on, like, with FWF. If we ever did an FWF again, I want to do one where we use our figures. And these figures, like ones oh. that you can use as wrestlers, you know? So then if you, if you do that, so can I throw a little bit of a challenge? Sure. Challenge yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. It has to be within the world of WWE turn. <laughs> oh so my God. Broski would be great at booking. <laughs> Could you barbarians how many characters he would kill on a weekly basis and then cut to commercial break like nothing happened right. and he cuts his head off <laughs> and his ghost ascends to the heaven <laughs> we cut to commercial break the lights go out it, it would be true true character storytelling like yeah, like throw him through the trap door, get a, throw him in the prison cell. Like, with everything he did in in FWF to begin with, now you're giving him magic, you're giving him sorcery, you're giving him the powers of Grayskull. Yeah, he like I know he's not like a He Man fan, but like just to have all those all those uh, tools in his toolbox now, like he's gonna burn down his house. Like we we do know this, right? Oh yeah, for sure. It'd be great. So so it'll be. You know, because th they're still wrestlers, so it'll still be a wrestling show. But yeah, like Joe was saying, there's tech, there's sorcery. They've all got to have like, uh, Kane brings his gut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine him doing like, uh, I believe it's Seth Rollins has the Zodak armor. Imagine him and Seth Rollins, the cosmic enforcer, enters on his chariot. Like Especially if we could expand to using he, uh, Origins figures. Could even do oh, that. Yeah. I, I think what, what you do then is you actually write a 22-minute episode and not a 11-segment wrestling show. Oh, bro. See, yeah. Well, we we have to... T we These things can't be like as long as they were. So whatever. If we ever do it so, again. So how, big, how big are the rosters? I mean, we drafted 23 for the first thing, and then we added two or three every month for six months or more. So there was 30 something people, but so I would consider faker John Cena and regular John Cena, two different characters. Oh, Absolutely. hell yeah. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. Triple H is probably like the same guy. Macho Triple Man H is, is just a costume guy. change. Macho yeah, Man Macho is a costume Man change. Um, D freedom, so by the way, breaking news here. Uh, new ringside major wrestling figure podcast figures coming in 2021 breaking news here on the Twitch channel. Thank you very much. Uh, speaking of FWF. So let me just tell you this uh, FWF. I think the math is there, Mark. Yeah, I, I, I think, think it is too. <laughs> we got to do it. FWF live went on sale today. Um, the pre-order um, doing very well. Thank you everyone for the support. Patreon.com slash FWF live. Uh, it's a Patreon, but it doesn't re resub. So it's just a one-time fee. You're basically renting a pay-per-view. 
you whatever like old school you get merch when you do it like you got that austin way back in the 90s um it's super fun i think it's going to be one of the best things that we ever did as a podcast um you know we've done all these live shows and these um you know the the uh histories that we put on youtube i think this is going to be one of the greatest things that we did and i i feel like we're finally bringing wrestling back to the major wrestling figure podcast um and all of our characters and stuff it's just going to be so fun and when we i think that we decided thursday april 8th at 5 p.m is technically when we're gonna go live with it um so hopefully everybody's watching along with us and joe shoot joe shoes there's somebody that looks just like you in action yeah, y- Yoko um, Shuna. Do you know him? There's a guy named Yoko Shuna. I've heard of him. We actually met at the Chinese buffet on Monday night before okay. I ate some peeps. <laughs> right. Um, seriously though, guys. Um, I wrestled f- for 15 years. I know a lot of you guys don't know me as a wrestler, and I'm just like Brian's friend, which is fine. Um, but uh, this was one of the coolest things like I've gotten to be involved with. I'm really proud to be involved with it. I really am. I'm thankful to the guys for even thinking of me because I remember when I got the phone call like asking me to be available. I thought it was a rib because at this point, like who was booking me on a wrestling show? <laughs> and I just kept saying like, but are you guys serious? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just like, I, I, like, I thought it was, I thought it was going to be like a, like one of the gallows and Anderson shows because like, it, you know, you're not going to have a real wrestling show and book me, but Hey, I'm coming out. And listen, if I'm going to come out and I'm going to, have a match. I'm not like, I know broski keeps saying it's a comedy match. I'm not coming to give you a comedy match. I'm coming to give you a match. Oh, baby. Yeah. Oh, baby. Here we go. <laughs> like there's a little stuff in the basement. Uh, Lester Murphy says, can I pay $10 just for the Phil Cardigan match? Unfortunately, no, but check Unfortunately, out his, no, because that's my match. And I, I am not taking a discount on that. <laughs> check out his recent YouTube video, by the way. It's, it's phenomenal. The Phil Cardigan video time- is great. When was the last time you laced up a pair of boots, Joe? That's a great uh, It's question. been about two and a half years. I joined the NWO that night, actually. So I belong <laughs> on Mark's shelf. <laughs> Without the giant. Kidding, Scott, Scott Hall gave me an NWO t-shirt in the middle of the ring. Where was this? Uh, and what was it for? It was in Tampa, Florida. Okay. For um, uh, FTW. Or Earl Cooter runs some Florida shows. So okay. I showed up and I got I joined the NWO. <laughs> What gimmick were you? The revolting blob or the hip Maximus swivel? I Maximus Sex Power. Okay. <laughs> the, the spawn of Adonis. <laughs> Maximus Sex Power sounds like a great Motu figure to me. To me, to be honest, I, I think so. I definitely think so. The the evil swiveler of hips. Yes. Let's get a couple questions know, before we sign off here. Uh, did you know the uh, original name of Merman? This was on the was the Man. Toys that made us. It was Seaman. <laughs> Those guys, <laughs> yeah, those guys had some fun back in the day. Oh. It, was in the, it was in the 80s, you know. <laughs> I love that show so much. I love the the Ninja Turtle one. Such a great show. I actually, did you guys watch uh, Movies That Made Us? Yes. I have uh, not. There's only a few episodes, but it was great. I really enjoyed the Dirty Dancing episode because... It's a movie I've seen a hundred times, but I've never like I've never been the fan like to that extent where I went and like researched all this stuff about dirty dancing. So to see all that and I'm like, oh wow, like this is right. super interesting. It was kind of like the Barbie episode of Toys That Made Us for me, because like like the Masters, I obviously know a lot about Masters. For for Barbie, so much of the stuff for me was like hearing it for the first time. So I found it like very interesting and and new Barbie's and fresh to me. Crazy story. Like mm. they've got a couple documentaries on Barbie. It's um it's pretty cutthroat back in the, the yeah right. <laughs> Even the Star Trek episode to me, because like I don't think of Star Trek as an action figure line, yeah. and then to see like all the, the like the massive amount of merch for Star Trek that blew me away. Uh, really tough question here, Nightwalker seven seven seven. Are we going to see Smart Mark uh, Masters of the Universe fig too? Um, yes, it's called the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. Um, uh, major wrestling figure podcast ringside figures because when are we getting that mark we in 2021 date? so my figure is the same exact figure as this you know whatever this is the style of figure so if i take goldberg here all right <clears throat> and then i put i think this is matt yeah so i put goldberg's thing on matt Boom. Fits perfectly. Then put the hat on. Well, the hat doesn't really fit. 
But here, you guys can see. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> but the, I mean, the shoulder guards so, fit. So if you pick you the right pieces. The top of Battle Cat. <laughs> oh my God. I took that picture of, of Matt on, on Battle Cat. But these are great. So yes, there is a Smart Mark Sterling Motu figure coming. Yeah, <laughs> you, so you can give me any uh, pieces you want. What this means is that all of you guys really need to order FWF Live, get it over enough to where they feel the need to make a Yoko Shuna figure. That way I can ride <laughs> Panther. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably break his back as a Yoko Shuna figure, but you know, listen, you won't know until you try. Love that. Hey, there's night. There's Night Stalker. You know, a giant yes. robotic horse. Yes. Uh, who needs a ninja figure? Or was it not, was it ninja? No, it was Jitsu, right? Who wrote, it was Jitsu who wrote that, and then Fisto who wrote uh, who wrote Stridor. Stridor, yeah. All right, we're gonna raid Colcabana slash raid. You guys have any final parting notes before I do this? What are uh, you about just, to do? We're gonna oh uh, we're gonna end the stream and raid Colcabana. But I'm asking oh, you two before we end the stream if you have any parting notes. Yeah. Uh, I just really, I'm very appreciative to be a part of this. Uh, so thank you to Mark for including me. Oh please, Brian. what is the, what are we? What is this? Our, our graduation speech? I'd like no, to no, thank no. The, uh... Just like, for, like, and and I, like, I know, like, I'm just like Brian's friend. So like, I get to be included in a lot of cool stuff that I really have no right to be. Oh please, you're be... you're Yoko Shuna, and we're gonna go to the uh, Milwaukee Brewers game in uh, Oscar. But like so. to have the opportunity to sit and talk with Robert, who is now one of the caretakers of the biggest fandom in my life, is beyond cool and i appreciate that very much and it's such a cool experience for me to sit here and just talk he-man stuff with one of the people responsible for it so very true very thank true you guys thank you robert I for, for coming I, I, on. I love doing it and thank you i i really appreciate the platform for being able to talk about it with you guys because yeah i love this stuff and i'm so glad that you guys do and that so many people do like i said last time this line has just kind of kept going and going and going mm. um so I love it, and uh, and the amount this is this is a good thing we got going on. This line's just going forever, so we can keep doing this. Because yeah. yeah, I do have one more thing before we do get out of here. Well, hold on. My, Matthew Wiley says shoes is my favorite character in the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast, Eternia. Am I the only character? Because <laughs> no, <laughs> in the Eternia realm of the Major Pod, yes. I, I might be the only one. So. No, no. no. But I, I do have my my fantasy lineup, my fantasy booking lineup for the next wave. Oh, okay. If Ric Flair is not sure in, it, I'm going to be upset. Made sure I Flair is once again not in. Here. Son of a. <laughs> Apologies to Ric Flair. Okay. Uh, one we've already touched on, which was Vince McMahon is the faceless one. Okay. I, th I think, especially now with Stephanie as Evil Lynn, that seems like the common sense way to go. Number two. Another woman in the line, we get Trish Stratus as She-Ra. Okay. I like that one. That's true. That's a good one. This one's a little, this one's a little deep, but okay. I really wanted an excuse to fit in Kevin Nash. Uh-huh. So we bring in Big Daddy Cool, toot toot, as Count Marzo. <laughs> wow. That... See, I think that you would have to lean more on Diesel in that one and just yeah. kind of, uh, as Count Marzo is. The, the dark hair, Ooh. the flowing hair, and you can even do like an HWO uh, version with him. I don't even know what who Count Marzo do, is. What so. if you were to do Hall and Nash as, a, as Too Bad? That, that as, could work too. You do the Outsiders as Too Bad could definitely work. Mm -hmm. And my final one, and this is why I kept it final because I don't know how the licensing works because I know there's been issues with a lot of the She-Ra characters in the past, but we get Brett, the Hitman heart feels like you want big names. You need a Brett heart and he's got to be the master archer bow heart on his chest, master archer, sharpshooter collaboration. Of sharpshooter. Yep. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I like that. Um, those are all great. <laughs> <laughs> I really love this. Those are great, but no. Um, Charlotte no, as I'm sorceress not, has, not, has to happen. I'm Charlotte as sorceress. Charlotte, I'm not saying no. I'm not saying. You're just telling me that I got to wait till the WrestleMania reveals and, and just be happy with what I get because something's coming. Something's brewing and Hopefully. I'm going to be excited for it. I'm saying that everyone 
should like wrestle wrestlemania is like the content as people have been posting up those schedules it's ridiculous so we're gonna add some more on top of it and yeah everyone once the information goes out um for whatever winds up going out should it go out it's it's going to be really good and everyone should definitely tune into that I'm I'm serious. All right. I'm not gonna wanna miss this one. Not the that beginning. not that our wrestling figure community would not be tuning in to this <laughs> giant <laughs> panel. Um, um all right. Well thank uh, you, Robert. We're gonna we're gonna raid uh Colt right now. We got that going. Wait, were you gonna say one last thing? I was just gonna I was just gonna say thank you. Thank oh. you to, to to all you guys. Uh, this was a blast in shoes whenever you wanna rewind and talk about and crack open those other guys. I'm set. Yeah, I maybe get you some for, for some origins too, if you if you don't mind. Oh I yeah, got, I got a ton of origins I haven't even touched yet. Let's do it. I'm not eating any pizza. <laughs> we don't we don't have to eat anything. We just, <laughs> just sit here and talk figs like responsible adults. That's yeah. right. Oh.